Hello, hey, welcome to the technical demonstration of abusing Docker to gain root privileges on a system. We're going to go all the way through this. I'm going to start with uh, a raw bare bones system. I'm going to show you how I've set it up. And I know that sometimes it gets a little bit confusing. So I've actually wrapped kind of carefully and quietly not to be distracting, but I've wrapped the, uh, the overlay here showing you when we're setting up the lab, when we're confirming the lab, and then when we actually move on to the hacksy ponzi stuff. So pay attention when the box goes red, that's the actual hacking. Before that, we're just doing setup. All right, so let's connect to our let's connect to our server. So my user is greedy user and this is where my server happens to live. Yes, I'm going to connect to it and I'm going to SSH. There we go. So you can see I'm actually SSH into this Docker, this this Debian 11 system. That's all it is. It's Debian 11 installed with a shell called ZSH, which is a little prettier and nicer to work with than Bash. But that's all it is. Those two features, nothing else. So I don't have Docker. Docker says command not found. I don't have anything else. And I'm not a privileged user. So if I try and look at the shadow file, I get permission denied. If I try and install something, sudo apt install fish and i type my password sudo exists but i'm not allowed to run sudo sudo is not user is not in the sudoers file this instance will be reported so that's the state we're picking up right now so we're going to set up this thing by installing docker and going from there so let's clear the page make this a little easier to read and first we're going to run some commands this is why i made the big clear heading at the top that we're in the setup phase so our administrator not us is going to log in as root and install docker so the first thing we need to do is update our software packages. Then we're going to install some new packages. Nothing new to install. We are going to, now the next couple of steps, there's three steps in a row. They're exactly following the Docker install guide for Debian. So I'm copy and pasting that, which is from the install guide from Debian. I'm copy and pasting this, which is the install guide for Debian. If you really want to know what these do, send me a message. I'll let you know. And I'm going to copy and pasting this again. All this allows me to do is to then one more time, I can run apt update. And now you'll see the very last one. Now it's added some Docker lines in there. So I can now install Docker using the package manager. Apt install. I'm going to install Docker CE and Docker CE CLI. So remember, this is the part done by a system administrator. So the administrator is installing Docker so that our user can run Docker and do their Dockery things with it. Very common for developers. It's actually a really, really common vector if you're pen testing for developers. So we're gonna let this install for a second. We've done the setup. So now we're going to flip it over to verify. In fact, I just verified most of my permissions. I showed you that I can't install, I can't install applications, etc. Not in the sudoers file. I can't, I can't view protected files. I'll show you how we escape where we're at and elevate to that in a minute. But first, what I'm going to do is show you a little bit of a quick a little overview on how Docker works in case you're not used to that. So let's clear the screen again. So this time I'm going to do something. I'm going to run Docker. I'm going to do Docker run instead of the hello world to test. I'm going to show you a couple of samples here. So I'm going to do RM, which means destroy this container when we're done. Interactive. Now, what kind of container do I want to run? I'm going to run one called Alpine Linux. It's a tiny version of Linux just meant for Docker containers. So it's, a, it's an entire operating system, but just runs in this container. And what do I want to run inside of that command? I'm going to run bash. So I'm going to download Docker and run bash. And then I'm going to remember that bash doesn't exist in Alpine Linux. And so I'm going to run just regular shell. So Docker run regular shell. Who am I? Who do you think the answer to this is going to be? Is it going to be greedy user or something else? No, inside the container, I'm root. I'm not root on my local host. I'm root inside of the container. And I can show you that I'm in a different container by going to like the home directory. What's in the home directory? Nothing. It's blank. Can this user view the shadow file of their directory? Yep, but there's nothing in it. It's all containers and it's all zeroed out. So it's all container users. 
So this is this Alpine Linux is built for this. Now, that's running inside of the container. If I were to make a directory, this is fun. So I've made a directory called this is fun. I'm going to go into this is fun. I'm going to put some stuff in a file. This is for sample purposes only. And I'm going to put that into a yummy.txt. I can't type yummy.txt. And now if I look, I've got yummy.txt. And if I look inside the file, this is for sample purposes only. Now, this is inside of a container. As soon as I leave this container, that's all gone. It's all gone. I can run the same command again, docker run alpine sh, go to the home directory, it'll be empty. See, it's empty. Containers are built this way. That's what they're for. So what we do with that, so I'm going to ex exit my container. What we do with this is we make files right here. So I'm going to make a directory called container goodies, and I'm going to go into container goodies. And I'm going to echo and say, this is a tasty file that I want to use inside of a container. And I'm going to put that into tasty. So now when I look in here, when I look in here, oop, uh, ended quote, grr. Let's get the screen, try this again. I am going to, this is a tasty file. I'm going to put that into tasty. There we go. So I've got tasty and it's right there. So if I look at my working directory, home greedy user container goodies, let's do our Docker run again, Docker run, destroyable, interactive. And now I'm going to mount the, the volume. I'm going to say, I want home greedy user container goodies slash tasty to exist inside of home slash container tasty. So when I do that, it's going to mount that file. You can files or folders, but it's in this case, it's a file. It's going to mount that file directly into container tasty. So let's look at that Alpine SH. So under home, I now have container tasty. And if I view it, this is a tasty file. I can go a little bit further. I can say, I'm adding to this. And I'm going to add that to container tasty. So I'm inside the container now and I've added to container tasty. So I'm inside the container. I've added to this file. Oops. I overwrote it by accident. Either way, I changed it. Let's, uh, I'm adding even more to this file. And this time I'll add it instead of overwriting the file. So now when we look at it there, I've got two lines. Now I'm adding, I'm adding even more. So when I leave the container, the container will be destroyed. But my changes to this file will be still there. So I've destroyed the container. It's long gone, but this file has changed. We're going to abuse that now. Now we're going to abuse that. Let's move on to the hacking. Hack the planet. We're going to do this time is we're going to do Docker run. We're going to mount a file, but instead of a file, we're going to mount the entire root directory. We're going to put it inside of the mount directory in Linux, in, in Alpine. Let's make it destructible. Let's make it interactive. We're going to say it's Alpine. And instead of running SH this time, we're going to run Chirut, which is change root directory. You can also launch after change root. So what we're going to do is we're going to do change root to mount, because otherwise we'd have all kinds of weird errors. You can't overwrite slash with slash, but we can change the root to a subdirectory and then run shell afterwards. So this is probably the lowest, fastest way to actually do this. So you'll see this time, Oops, one too many letters. Whoa, fingers off the keyboard. My root folder looks different. My shell looks a little different too because of that cheroot. So if I go to home, I can see the greedy user home directory. More importantly, if I go to Etsy shadow, I can now view the hashes from inside the container of the root file system, of the host file system. They're in here now. So I can view those hashes. I'm going to go one step further. Let's clear the screen. One step further. Check this out. Remember how I edited that tasty file? I'm going to do the same thing. But what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to edit the pseudoers file. So that's the, the file that says these people have permission under these circumstances to run as root. Hopefully I get this all right the first go. Um, that looks about right. So it looks like the, the command line configuration to say, hey, 
this user is allowed to run as root. And I'm going to put that under the sudoers file, and I'm going to call it greedy user. Now there's one thing left, to, so it echoed my command back to me, so I got it right. Now in in sudoers file, they have to have the right permission. So I got to make sure I have the right permission. D slash greedy user. So that file now has permission. So if I exit this container, I've modified the one on my host. If I exit this container, that host file is in here for sudo. So this user should be able to sudo apt install fish. Yes. Hey, we ran sudo. We didn't even get prompted for a password. Let's do this instead. Sudo cat Etsy shadow. There, I am sudo Etsy shadow. One more thing. Once you're sudo, you have it all. So I can do sudo interactive and I'm root. So we've hacked the planet. We took over root from a development container. So we had a container that was configured properly, installed in Docker. The user was added to the group. It wasn't privileged in any way, but we abused that, which is extremely common in development environments. So software engineers out there, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them using it just like this, they can abuse Docker to take over root permissions. So there we go. I've taken over root. And, you know, as they all say, hack the planet. In fact, hack the planet. Save it to root. Can't do it, but I can echo. I can do it as sudo. Yay. Oh, permission denied. I didn't like that anyway. However, you get the idea. Thanks for, uh, thanks for watching my demo, everybody. And uh, now I can't let it go. Thanks for watching my demo, everybody.